Gym in Queensland. So I'm super excited to be back again today. You may have seen me pop on earlier this morning to give you a little bit of exciting news. And I did tell you that I was going to pop back on and do a bit of crafting. So it'll take a little while for you to actually get the notification that I've gone live. So I hope that quite a few of you can join me for my live crafting session. Now, if this is the first time that you have joined me, my name is Donna Gray and I'm a stamping up demonstrator in the scenic rim in Queensland. And I teach people how to make a card from the beginning to the end. So you may see in the heading of this video today, Day, watercoloring embossed flowers. So um, I'm going to have a little bit of a play around with a brand new bundle. Now I'm going to tell you this brand new bundle was definitely not on my radar when I first uh, seen the catalog go live when I was first doing my pre-order out of the brand new January to April mini catalog. But oh my Lord, I have seen so many beautiful uh, creations with this bundle that I simply had to have it. So I ended up, I order it, ordered it the other day and I've got it in now. And I wanted to show you a little bit of um, some watercoloring and how you can emboss images and then watercolor. And if you're just starting out with watercoloring, probably embossing the image is probably the easiest way to go because when you emboss an image, it sort of encapsulates the watercolor um, that you get. So um, it actually helps you with your watercoloring. So it's a great way to get started with watercoloring. And so I'm super excited to be showing you that this afternoon. So welcome, welcome. I can see a few of you jumping on. So as I said, I did promise this morning when I jumped on and told you about my free um, I Love Stamping event that I'm actually releasing. So um, so I'm super excited to be talking about that too. I'll talk a little bit more about that as we go on today as well. So as you know, we have a brand new mini catalog that has been available now for the last month and it's celebration time. So it's a great time to purchase Stampin' Up and it's a great time to actually to join Stampin' Up. So joining is um, something that I really want to have a bit of a chat with you about because it is an awesome offer at the moment. So I'll just pop the camera down and I'll tell you just a few things that I have going on in my business and then we'll get right to stamping because I know that's what you're here for. So, um, of course, the one thing that I announced this morning is my I Love Stamping Night with um, our Wild Heart Crafters team. And it's it's a little bit, um, it's a, um, a night where... I want to tell you all about Stampin' Up. I want to tell you all about what it's like to purchase the starter kit, what it means for you and um, what it could do for you when it comes to your crafting. So um, it's uh, what we call an opportunity night. So it's a Stampin' Up opportunity night and we will get together. We'll have a cup of coffee. It's a very informal night. Have a cup of coffee. I've got a daytime one. I've got a nighttime one and I've got an online via Zoom one as well. So I've catered for all all, um, all people. So hopefully one of the time slots will suit you. So if you're interested in finding out a little bit more about Stampin' Up, a little bit more about what it's like to be a part of my Wild Heart Crafters team, and also um, a little bit more about the products and enjoying a discount and what what purchasing the starter kit could actually mean for you, then this is the event for you. So if you're brand new to crafting and you want to get started and you don't know where to start, this event is for you. If you've been crafting for a while, you're a casual crafter and you've got quite a few things in your craft supplies, but you want to know more about it and you want to enjoy crafting more and getting more value for your money, then this is the event for you. Yes, Deborah, Deborah's, she has registered for the Zoom one and it's a really great time to actually have a question and answer time with me. So it's a great time that you can ask me any questions you want to ask me about Stampin' Up! Because sometimes there's there's reasons why people don't want to purchase the starter kit. And it can be a simple reason that can be explained and it can be, um, the, the question can be answered and it can put your mind at ease about joining because there's absolutely nothing to be scared of about joining. It's just enjoying a discount, being a part of a crafty community and getting help and guidance with your 
you're crafting. That's what it's all about. Plus getting more value for money because you're getting 20% discount straight off the bat. Now, um, I wanted to hold an event so that this is specifically tailored to showing you lots of tips and tricks. We're going to do a little bit of a crafting session in it, but we're also going to be talking about purchasing the starter kit and what it actually will um, mean for you um, if you purchase the starter kit. Now, for anyone that's in my Wild Heart Crafters team, if you've got some friends that may be thinking about getting uh, a discount as well, then by all means, they are invited to attend this event as well because I know Deborah is actually a part of um, my team. She's not actually on my level one. She's actually a level uh, three, I think, in my team but we have all different levels in our teams and it's about giving people the opportunity to be a part of a crafty community um, i have sweet delicious happening at the moment this is a fun fold class that rose ward and myself do you get three three fun folds from myself and three fun folds from rose and it's sent to you in video form via an email link and we send out the links of the unlisted videos for the fancy flora you will get a pack of the fancy flora designer series paper you will get a pack of the iridescent uh, gems you'll also get a roll of the pool party ribbon which is really really good it's $70 to register the link is in the show more box down below or in the description of this video if you still want to get your hands on it we will email that links out and I know that today is the last day of January but it's not too late to get it all right so if you wanted to do that and today is absolutely the last day to actually register for my two-day summer craft retreat and I've been overwhelmed by the amount of registrations that I've had and I'm super excited about this event. It's being held here in the scenic rim at Bow Desert on the 18th and 19th of March. So it's going to be held at the RSL Club here in town. For It costs $190 to attend in person. And for that $190, you will get the Seaside Bay bundle. So the stamp set and the dies. You will also get some designer series paper, a roll of ribbon, a pack of embellishments, and all the cardstock that you need to make eight projects that I have designed. And you'll also get a PDF tutorial showing you step-by-step -step how to actually create the cards with with photos of the the projects that we're designing and you can actually get this delivered to your door in a box so it's $190 to attend in person food and um, accommodation is not included and I mean for $190 where can you get two days of entertainment with food and accommodation included like nowhere um, but anyway you can book your own accommodation if you're within distance to travel you can travel it doesn't start until 10 a.m each morning so it gives you plenty of time to travel in the morning if you wanted to get it delivered to your door in a box it's just an extra $25 to cover the postage but you get everything that everyone gets in person um, including the PDF tutorial everything that you need to be able to create the project so you will not need uh, other than the inks you will need to have the ink colors that we use or something similar uh, but it's a great way to really get into crafting I tend to make people step out of their comfort zone I tend to do a couple of different types of projects so um, it actually it actually gives you a lot of um, experience when it comes to crafting and probably gives you a chance to try things that you wouldn't normally do so it's a great two two days of fun so if you're interested the registration link is in the show more box down below um, please feel free to register I've um, but I'm well on the way it has to be registered and paid for today so it's the absolute last day to get in on that two-day retreat so once again as i said we were talking about that we have a great joining special and there's three joining specials that we have available for and it's ending on the end of um february so the 28th of february so it's going for another month now the i love stamping night is going to explain to you about the starter kit and what the starter kit involves and it's also going to show you how much value you can get because i'm going to have um some sample starter kits made up so you can actually see how much value you're going to get for your money you get to choose $315 worth of product in this starter kit which is more than normal normally we only get to 
choose 235. So they've sweetened the deal um, for the month of January and February. So, um, but if you can see this cute little mini boho die cutting machine, if you don't own a die cutting machine, there is two options that you can get to purchase a starter kit with the little mini die cutting machine as part of your starter kit. Now it's really, really simple. And if you have some questions about joining, please feel free to uh, give me a call because I would be more than happy to give you, um, uh, answer any questions you may have about um, the starter kit. Now there's my phone number. It's on the bottom of the screen there. Um, and you can see here on, on this, my phone number here. If you have any questions or you have any doubts and you wanted to just chat about what the starter kit means, then by all means, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm more than happy to explain it. It To me, what it actually really means is being a part of a crafty community and getting help and inspiration with your crafting. There's so many things that my team get that I help my team. I inspire my team. We have weekly challenges. Uh, for the business-minded people, we have free uh, demonstrator training, so training on how to hold classes, how to actually set up uh, business pages on Facebook, how to post on social media. So I help and guide and we have a weekly question and answer in our training. If you wanted to run it as a business or you wanted to start to run it as a business or you even think about just wanting to get some people together and actually have a crafting group that you maybe meet once a fortnight or maybe once a month or even maybe once a week. So there's many, many options opportunities and no matter how you join Stampin' Up, I like to guide you with whatever way, whatever you want to get out of your Stamping Up. If you just want to buy wholly and solely and just get your discount, then by all means, I'm happy to help you and guide you and inspire you with, um, with creativity. If it's that you actually want to join and you've got a couple of friends that may want to buy and help you make your quarterly amounts, then that is an awesome way to do it as well. If you want to join and you want to get a crafty group together, then I'm happy to help you and guide you in how to do that. If you want to join and you want to actually find some customers and to actually start to, to run it as a business, then that's what the demonstrator business training is for. Stampin' Up! don't provide that training for us, so I actually provide that for my team and it's free for my team if my team are interested in running their Stampin' Up! that way. So we have three different offers. One is with the Boho Mini. It's $210 to get the Boho Mini blue machine in, included in your starter kit. So um, $210, you, you choose $315 worth of product, but you pay $210 and it gets delivered to your door. So you can enjoy the Boho Mini, but still choosing $315 worth of product, which is really, really good. If you don't want the blue one, you can actually get the white one. So it's the same thing again. You pay $210 and you get the white mini cut and emboss machine and you get to choose $315 worth of product. But if you totally don't want a die cutting machine, then the basic starter kit is the one for you. $169, so you pay less and you get to still choose $315 worth of products. So um, so the basic starter kit may be the one that you might want to go to if you've already got a die cutting machine. But if you're a brand newbie and you're, and you're only just starting out, um, the, the little mini cut and emboss machine is a great deal because then you've actually got a, a mini cut and emboss machine that you can cut a lot of things with. Anyway, all right, so the stamp set that I'm going to use today is the Fragrant Flowers. So this is a stamp set that I honestly, I looked at it in the catalog and I thought, I don't think I like it. And oh, I have seen so many gorgeous products with this bundle that I just simply had to have it. So who out there that's watching, who wasn't going to get this set but has now seen people crafting with it and said, oh, my God, I really, really want to get that set because I can tell you um, it is really, honestly, a stunning stunning set. But I wanted to show you about embossing and watercoloring with this set because I think it's a great way to introduce you into watercoloring. As I said, when you do an embossed 
image, you have the embossing that will actually encapsulate your water coloring. So it stops your water coloring from going outside of the lines if you want to be a, a particular person and, and color it and make sure that it's actually in the lines and not giving that definite watercolor look where, um, I mean, the beauty of watercoloring is that you can go outside the lines and it's totally okay because that's the look of watercoloring. But if you're a person that wants to have something a little bit neater and a little bit more tailored and a bit more more controlled, then maybe embossing and watercoloring is the way to go. So I wanted to show you how to do that today um, and just generally have a bit of a play with this gorgeous new stamp set. So um, this, I haven't used it yet. I just got it out and popped the stickers all on my, my um, stamps, but I haven't actually used it. So it hasn't seen any ink or anything. So let's get to having a fun time with this crafting. So if you're interested in actually joining my team, um, then I have a link here that if you want to copy down that link, but the link is actually in the show more box down below on YouTube. And it's also in the description of this video. If you actually want to click on that link, that will take you straight to the joining option. Um, and if you got stuck at any, any part of it, if you wanted to join and jump on and join and be a part of the crafty community, we're having our online team meeting tonight. So we're actually all getting together and we're going to craft together tonight. So that's one of the perks of being a part of my team is having a monthly team meeting where we all get together. We chat about crafty things. We chat about life in general, and then also get to craft together too. So if you're interested in that, Hey, Linda, how are you going? If you're instant, interested in that by all means jump on join my team today and I will get you in the group and I will get you all hooked up to be able to attend our team meeting tonight all right so I have actually come up with a bit of a color scheme I I thought I liked the um the starry sky and polished pink so I thought I would um have that as my color scheme so I wanted to show you some tips and tricks about embossing and um one of the things that I absolutely love is our um embossing tray it is super super awesome to it's it's what we call our embossing additions kit now, the Embossing Editions Kit gives you this cute little handy-dandy tray that catches your embossing powder because the one thing about embossing is when the powder goes everywhere. Now, it does actually have a set of tweezers, and for the life of me, I don't actually physically know where I've put my tweezers out of this additions kit, but I'm sure they will be around in my craft room somewhere. But um, And I'm just going to show you, and you need Versamark ink to be able to do some embossing and a heat tool. So we actually sell the heat tools. Oops. And mine is here plugged in. This is my heat tool. So we actually sell the heat tools um, through our online store. And I can tell you embossing is one of the things that absolutely gets me every single time. We're also going to use some of our water painters. So I've actually got one of the water painters here. Now they have a barrel that you can fill up with water and, um, and we can use these to do our water coloring. So it makes water coloring a lot easier. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is I'm going to try and grab a block to mount this big flower on so I've got block E here um, so because it's such a big flower we actually need that bigger block to be able to um, mount our flower so you can see it just fits on block E so it's a pretty huge stamp it's a pretty big stamp and um, there's a fair bit to it. So I'm actually going to do that. And I think I might mount up this small flower because we might do a couple of those as well. I don't actually really physically know what I'm doing. I've got the dies here that go with it. So we've got some cute leaf dies. We've got some cute little bud dies. We've got this really cute little embossing die, which is really, really good. And it can add a bit of texture to your card. So that's actually a really good fun thing um, to have a fun time with as well. So let's just go ahead and grab our Versamark ink. And one of the things when you're embossing, you may look at this poor little pillow. And I, I have had this embossing buddy since the time I started crafting. And I can tell you it has definitely had its work um, cut out for it. Uh, but I can tell you it has, it has really done the job. Now, it's filled with like a type of powder. 
Um, it's a little bit like talc powder. I mean, I know some people have actually made like their own little embossing um, buddy, but I can tell you it's super cute. But what it actually does is it takes any of the sticky, the oily finger marks or any sticky residue because we don't want our embossing powder to stick to anything that we don't want it to stick to. We only want it to stick to our stamped image. So I'm actually going to um can you see that can you see how there's like powder i just want to show you that see how there's powder that's coming out of it so that powder actually we rub it all over our sheet of cardstock and that's actually going to stop our embossing powder from sticking to anything that we don't want it to stick to now when i've got a big stamp like this one i actually like to leave it on its back like that and actually ink it up when it's on its back so you can imagine trying to take this huge cumbersome um, block and trying to put it onto this small little ink pad okay so Versamark is so I always tend to tip it over this way to make sure that I've got my image inked up really really well and it's easier to take the ink pad to the larger stamp rather than trying to ink up onto a smaller ink pad um, with that large stamp all right, so I'm actually going to stamp that one. I wonder whether I can, I want to be able to get, I'm going to stamp that one right there like that because I want to try and get one of these smaller flowers on this piece of cardstock as well. So I'm just, because it's a large stamp, I'm just like making sure that I've got even good pressure all the way over. Now, the Versamark ink stays sticky for a fair while. So I'm actually going to take that up. Now I'm going to try and show you this in the light. Can you see there that you can see that we've got a sticky stamped image? You can see it's sort of like shining in the light a little bit. So if you're a bit hard of seeing, sometimes it's a little bit hard to see where you've actually stamped with that. But I'm going to do the smaller flower just down here in this bottom corner because I think I've got room to actually put that. I might actually do it that way to tell you the truth. So I'm just going to stamp that down in that bottom corner. Once I put the, the ink, the powder on, you're going to see exactly where it is um, once I put the powder on. Now, I'm actually going to do this one in white because I'm going to show you what it's like to see it in white. And then if I have a chance, I might if I've got enough time, I might do a second one in um, in gold. So it'll be a little bit hard for you to see the white on the video camera here because, um, because it's white on white. So it's a little bit hard to see that in the video camera. But I'm going to shake that all over my stamped image. So and then you just flick off the excess. Okay. Now, can you see there, I've got powder all over that stamped image. So I'm just going to move that aside so I don't blow all that powder everywhere. And I'm going to bring in my heat tool and we're going to heat that. So what actually happens is with our heat tool, we've got two heat settings. So we're going to put it on the second heat setting. And with our heat tool, it actually has, um, it melts that powder into that clear ink. So um, that's actually what heat embossing is all about. So I'm letting my heat tool heat up because, um, and it gets very hot, this heat tool. Some people ask, can you use a hairdryer? The hairdryer doesn't get as hot as what our heat tool does. So, um, so you definitely need to have a specific heat tool to do your heat embossing. And I'm just going to hold it underneath that stamped image. Now, this is personal preference how you do that. But I can then see that go nice and creamy and melt that powder. Now, you will see it better if I do another embossed image, if I do a second one and we use the gold embossing powder, you will actually see that embossing technique a little bit better. But it's actually going smooth and creamy and, and melting that embossing powder into that sticky clear ink. So it then gives us a picture, like a, a stamped image, that then we're able to colour with our watercolouring. Okay, so we have that and that's all totally embossed and done. So I'll just try and hit it with the light so you can see. We have 
a really nice shiny embossed look so it's a bit hard if I had done it on black you would have been able to see but then you wouldn't see the water coloring so that's why I did it on white okay so the next thing what we're going to do is we're going to bring in our ink pads and I'm going to use polished pink I think I might use a little bit of mint macaron for the leaves for the green leaves now, when you're doing a white image like this, it's a little bit hard to see, but um, we will try, you'll see the, the colour, you'll see the flower come alive when I start um, using my watercolour. So now I've got my aqua painter here and you'll have to bear with me because I'll have to keep looking at it like this in the light to be able to see where the flower is. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to drop a couple of drops of water into my ink there. Okay, so we've got a really nice, wet, inky look there. So I'm actually just going to do that over the flower. And you're going to see this gorgeous flower come alive. And this is how beautiful this image is by just going over it with our aqua painter. Okay, so I'm just trying to suss out where that flower actually exists and that's part of the flower too I think so we're gonna suss it all out just like so okay and that's part of the flower there all right I think that's uh, that's a part of the flower so you just have to bear with me I just have to be able to see it in the light to be able to see but can you see how this flower is coming alive with that embossing isn't that just super super gorgeous um i i can tell you i absolutely love being able to bring a beautiful embossed image alive and it's like magic isn't it seeing it just appear it's like magic now because we've got that embossed image the the ink is able to just pull up and be caught in the in the image itself because we've embossed it um, you'll find that the water it it helps keep that inside the image okay so we have and there's a little bit more of the flower there as I said I'm having a bit of a hard time trying to see that but I think that is most of the flower I did go outside the the image a little bit just there but that's okay and we've got a couple of buds here so I'm just gonna go around on the buds like so okay so I'm gonna do this flower down here as well so we're just going to add a bit of ink now I'm gonna go back through after we've after we've actually done the whole flower I'm gonna go back through and I can add some extra color in areas if I need to. Okay. Can you see how gorgeous those flowers are? Absolutely stunning. Now, what I actually need, bear with me, I just need to go and grab um, some paper towels from in my pantry. So you can either use paper towels or you can use an old, um, I don't know, I mean, most of you have had babies and maybe you have some old burp rags or something left. And all I do is run a little bit of clear, bit of water through and that just, can you see, it just cleans the tip of that water painter and, um, and you have no problem whatsoever. Um, with it cleaning it up all right so now I've finished with the pink for a bit I'm going to bring in the mint macaron so I'm going to squeeze that and I'm going to bring in some of that mint macaron and we'll do some of the leaves now and you'll see that come together again with um, the green with our leaves so I'm going to add and the mint macaron is quite um, quite sedate as far as the leaves so I didn't want anything too overpowering because the pink is quite um, quite a nice subtle pink 
Uh, watercoloring you'll find you won't get as strong a color as you would normally get because the water tends to dilute the color a little bit so you'll find that your images aren't quite oh and I've just seen I've got a little um I've got a little bud there that I didn't see I just seen when I moved that then okay so I've got some color happening on the the leaves I might actually just add a tiny little bit of green happening in the stems of those buds I'll add some green on the leaves here now what I can actually do after I've after I've colored the majority of my stamped image so you can see there I've got the majority of it colored um, and I can go back through and I can add some more color so with the pink I'm actually going to add I missed that little um, actually I need a little bit of green there I missed that little bud there so I'm gonna go back through with my pink and pick it up and grab some ink on that little bud there okay and now I can go back through and I can add some darker color so you know that with some of your flowers you get like a darker center and you may want some darker outer bits so I'm just going to go back through now not with it as watery as what it was I'm just going to go back through now and add a little bit of darker color on the outside of those petals on the outside of the flower just to add a little bit more of a highlight a little bit more of a color difference in that flower so with watercoloring that's the beauty of it you can go back and you can add some more color where you think you need some more color and I mean I could go around a couple of these edges and add a little bit of extra color around the edges of those petals so the outside part of those petals just to get a little bit more definition in the watercoloring now honestly I am not an artist. I physically, I, I can tell you I probably failed um, art at school. But you can see instantly by, um, by adding a little bit of colour when you go back through, it just changes the flower. Like it adds a little bit more definition to the flower and just changes the look of the flower to add that extra that extra detail and as I said I'm I'm not a brilliant artist but by going back in and just adding that layer so you'll find that the first bit that you've done has sort of started to dry and then going back through this is just adding some more detailed pieces and adding a little bit of variegation to your flower to um, create a little bit more definition and it doesn't really like you can see I'm not being too particular where I'm putting it but it's great it's added some really really great um are you doing this on normal cardstock yes I am I mean watercolor cardstock would probably be um advisable but honestly this is plain basic white cardstock and it's holding up okay as long as you don't add a super amount of water you will be fine and we will actually have to pop these aside and let them dry before we actually go to doing our die cutting so I I thought what I would do is add the color do what we're going to do and then I will pop that aside and let it dry for a bit and we may go back through and we'll color a different one and see what it looks like so now what I'm actually going to do is I've cleaned my aqua painter once again I'm going to go back through now and I'm going to pick up some of that green and I'm going to add a little bit of extra definition to those leaves and you'll see it will bring the leaf alive when we add that extra definition into the leaf and we can add a little bit just in the center but you can see there it's just made that leaf be more defined and more obvious okay and that's just by outlining 
and getting a little bit extra color on those outside tips of the leaves just to add that extra definition. So making sure that you're not getting too wet with your aqua painter, making sure that you're just really picking up color and going along the outside of that just to add a little bit of color on those leaves to make them a little bit more defined than what they were. And you can go up the center just to add a little bit of extra definition in the center of those leaves as well. So I just find that going back over, once it's dried a little bit, it just adds that extra depth to your color. And you, it's like you're layering the color on top of the other color. So back up through the um, veins of that leaf. So honestly, uh, I mean, if you were brand new to watercoloring, you could easily achieve this because you can see I'm not actually doing anything too particular with it, just more or less running over that embossed image. Okay, so can you see there we've got some really, really gorgeous detailed flowers and super, super easy that embossing, as I said, encapsulates that um, that watercoloring and helps it stay within the lines and it helps you do a really good watercolored image. All right, so let's try on a different piece of paper now. Let's try, I'm, I'm just going to get another piece of basic white cardstock. But we'll try embossing just with a different um, a different color embossing powder and just see the difference in what that makes as well. So uh, once again, I'm going to go back over with my embossing buddy and tap it all over my piece of white cardstock that I have here. And as I said, it's just normal basic white that I'm using. You can use watercolor paper. The only difference is between using watercolor paper it um, watercolor paper soaks up the Versamark ink. So I find that it's a little bit harder to get a good crisp stamped image. So if you're actually going to um, heat emboss on watercolor paper, my suggestion would be maybe to use the um, to use the Stamparatus so that you can stamp a couple of times to get a good coating of that white um, uh, sorry, the clear Versamark. So this is how the embossing additions tool works. So you can see here that I have collected the majority of all that embossing powder. You can then use your little brush and brush out any of the, the bits that tend to want to stick to the outside of the container. Um, but a super easy way, I mean, I used to always use a piece of paper and scoop it up in a piece of paper but how easy is that okay so as you can see and then I'm just any of the little bit that's left in there I'm just going to tap onto my floor no one will know it's a tiny little bit of powder <laughs> the vacuum cleaner will pick it up um, all right so I'm then going to do the same thing I'm going to stamp these again like we did with the Versamark so I'm going to bring in that large stamp and the smaller stamp, and we're going to ink up with our Versamark ink again. Um, so, as I said, the Versamark ink is uh, a clear, sticky ink that our embossing powder is going to stick to. So, you make sure, because it is such a large stamp, make sure that you leave it turned over um, and ink it up that way because it's so much easier to use rather than trying to ink up on. Um, on the when it's on the block okay so I'm just going to stamp that one right there so I've got a bit of room to be able to cut around it when it comes to cutting this out okay so we have that one and then of course I'm going to ink up the smaller one and we're going to stamp the smaller one down on the bottom so that we can color both of those okay so we'll go there all right, so now this time I'm actually going to change up the colouring a little bit so you can see it um, a little bit different as well. So I'm going to use some gold embossing powder. So we'll pop that back into our little tray 
and we'll grab the gold and we will just sprinkle the gold over. So now you're going to see when the embossing powder sticks to this because it's more obvious doing it this way with the gold. Okay, so you're going to see what it looks like before I actually emboss. Okay, so you can see there. So we've got the sticky ink and the powder has stuck to that clear sticky ink and now we will hit that with the heat tool. Now this is what I'm saying. You will actually see how the embossing comes now with the gold because it's a little bit more obvious. So I'm going to heat up my heat tool again. So I've got it on um, on the number two heat setting. So it's that the hottest setting. And once it heats up, I'm then going to hold it underneath my card. Now this is personal preference holding it under your card. I like to do that because the heat tends to warp your cardstock. Okay, so can you see that starting to go gold? Okay, so that's heating up, going nice and gold. It's a bit hard to see in the camera there. Okay, let's try this bigger one. You might see it happen a bit more in the bigger one. Although it's not looking real gold at the moment. I did, that is an old bottle of heat embossing powder. So someone asked me one day, do you think it goes off? Maybe it does because it's normally a brighter gold than that. But anyway, we will get the effects and we will see how it looks. So I just hold it underneath and that embossing happens. So you can see it goes really nice and shiny. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that gold. That's maybe, maybe that heat embossing container has had its day. It's a very old one I found at the bottom of my box. Okay, but anyway, we've got a bit of a gold look there. Um, it is fun, isn't it, Rebecca, to see the embossing change? That one just didn't change as good as it should. But anyway, um, I wonder can I find – anyway, we will go with it. Honestly, it's, it's how it's going to be today. <laughs> it's one of those days. All right, so let's bring in the starry sky. So I'm going to do the same thing uh, with the colouring again, only this time it's going to be so much easier to be able to see because you can see there – you can see the embossed image so much easier than when we were doing the white one. So if you're hard of seeing, maybe a gold embossing or silver embossing might be the way to go, or we've even got copper, might be the way to go. So now I'm going to use Starry Sky. So the Starry Sky is a fair bit darker, so there's a fair bit of, of colour in that Starry Sky. So I'm just going to use the majority of the colour on the inside of the flowers and then once I've I've used the majority of the, the colour I'm then going to go back through without re-inking again and finish colouring in the outside of that flower. So you can see there I have hardly even tried with that colouring. Like honestly I just got there and and rubbed it through. Okay. So Please don't overthink watercolouring. I think it's, um, <laughs> Barry, you're in love with it. Um, I think it's it's something that a lot of people shy away from because they're not confident with it. But in all honesty, it is not that scary. You can see here that I'm not being that particular in how I'm doing it and it's coming out really, really nice. And the idea of watercolouring is it doesn't matter that you have the different variegations in the colour. It doesn't, it seriously doesn't matter. But now if I wanted to, I mean, watercolouring paper would probably be a lot better as far as getting a really nice watercoloured look. So the watercoloured paper allows you to be able to remove colour. Um, on normal cardstock, it's a little bit harder to, to get that look and to be able to, um, well, I mean, 
to even remove colour. It's it's just too hard to try and remove colour. I could try. I could go in there, but it's definitely not going to work as well. So I've just got water and spread that around a little bit more. Okay. So we have we have that look there. Now I can actually even blot. And if I blot it, a bit of that will come out. So now I can add some more detail. So if I want to go back in and add a bit of extra detail happening in the middle of the flower, a bit of extra detail happening just around the outside edges of that flower to make it a little bit more defined, we can go back in and do the same thing as what we did with the pink. And that gives us a bit more of an edging to that flower. And then I can go through the flower in certain parts and just add a little bit more colour in certain areas just to get that darker variegated look. Now this flower is fairly detailed so there is not a lot of watercolouring space to be able to um, to watercolour because it is a fairly detailed uh, fairly detailed stamp so because it is so detailed there's not a lot of room I mean on this bigger flower down the bottom here there's probably more room to to move with getting that variegated look a little bit more but as far as the the actual flower itself there's a fair bit of detail in there so trying to add a little bit more darker color in areas can tend to be a little bit harder because of how much detail is in that stamp because it's not a lot of area that you can actually add that darker bit. But you can go around the petals and get a little bit more of a defined look by just going around the edge in, in that aligned image of the petals. And you can see there that I'm starting to get a much more variegated flower than what I started with. And honestly, it's as simple as not being scared to try things uh, with the ink, honestly. Um, you love the heat embossing. That's what got me into stamping many years ago. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so, I mean, heat embossing is super, super fun. As I said, um, there's so many purposes for heat embossing and this one here with doing watercoloring you are absolutely going to love it because it just makes watercoloring so much easier and and I mean like if this was just a stamped image I wouldn't be this slap happy because what's actually happening is the watercolour, the, the ink is actually just hitting where the cardstock is and because there's so many embossed pieces, so you can see there, you've got a really nice variegated look. So now we'll do some of those buds there and then we'll go back through with our mint macaron. Okay, so once again on that, on that piece of either paper towels or and I do tend to like to take the water out of my ink pads if I'm going to close them up um, mainly to protect that ink pad um, from getting contaminated with water when it's not supposed to have the water in it we don't want to have it mixing with our ink so I run it until it goes clear and even though it looks like it's blue it's still quite clear and then we're going to do our green leaves again so once again, just absolutely laying down that colour and I'm being not very particular at all. I'm just throwing it out there, okay, just to get that coverage in the leaves and then I'll go back and add some more detail with the stronger colour once I've laid down the lighter base to that watercolour leaves, okay. So now I'm going to pick up, can you see over here on the edge of my ink pad here, I've got some here that didn't have a lot of water mixed with it. So that's going to give me that darker look. 
okay so picking up where the water hasn't mixed in with your ink in that lid that's where you get your darker darker color to pick up and add some more detail to your leaves so once again just going around the outside of those leaves adding a bit bit of detail we don't do it need to do it as much this time because we've got that more obvious embossed look with our leaves so we probably don't need to outline them as much as what we did on the white but you can see um, just the difference between the two and by adding that extra extra depth to your leaves okay can you use pastels on this technique um you probably could deborah yes um and um, yes, you probably could. So Deborah's got a great question. She said, "Can you probably can you use pastels with this technique? Um, because your pastels are you talking about your chalk? Um, that's what you're talking about, Deborah. Because um, Stampin' Up have chalks, and um, yes, you can actually because they're a powdery look. You can actually rub them in, and it will colour on the cardstock." that's in between so yeah all right so I'm just going to hit this one with the heat tool just to make sure that it's dry I don't want to overheat again because of the heat embossing I don't want to actually like recook my heat embossing so I'm just going to hit it with the heat tool and try and get it that we get it as dry as we possibly can get it so that we're able to cut it out with our dies so just lightly going over it to make sure that we're drying out that cardstock where that watercolour has been sitting. Oh, Melinda, it's you. I was thinking you were um, another person that followed me. So now I'm and now I'm realising the Baz Mel is Melinda. So welcome, Melinda. <laughs> Melinda's one of my team members. So once again, as I was saying, the Stamping Opportunity Night is a great night if you are thinking about um, getting a discount. Uh, but it's a, it's a really great opportunity to just come and hang out and try crafting. So if you're local to me here in the Scenic Rim, I've, I'm holding one on Monday the 13th at 9.30am in the morning, so a day um, stamping opportunity. And then I'm also holding a night one on Monday the 13th. I'm holding it at 6.30 at night. So if you're someone that works through the day, you may want to come to the night session, but come have a cup of coffee have a bit of a look and see what it is that I do, experience, have a have a go at stamping um, and creating and just seeing what Stampin' Up! is about. And as I said, ask me any questions that you might need to ask me when it comes to Stampin' Up! because you get my undivided attention. All right, so we have a die that's going to cut out these flowers. So we have... Oh, this one here that's going to cut out that one. We have this one here that's going to cut out that one. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to need to use probably some, um, I've got to go and grab my cut and boss machine. I'll be one minute. Okay, so I'm just going to use a bit of washi tape because we've actually heat embossed. As you can see, the cardstock has warped a little bit. So because the cardstock's warped a little bit, it's going to be hard to line our dies up and not um, have them move on us. So I realised I was looking for washi tape the other day and I knew that I had found a box in my old craft supplies of old washi tape. So I actually found it. And I thought, you know what, I can use that washi tape for when I haven't got the magnetic platform. So any type of washi tape, any type of removable tape is really, really good for this. So what I'm actually going to do is line that die up so it cuts out the buds and everything when we cut out this 
shape. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to grab some of the washi tape. I'll pop a bit of washi tape up here on my die cutting machine so that I can grab some pieces. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to pop a couple of bits of washi tape on here. Now, when be very careful when you're removing the washi tape if that's what you're doing because you've watercolored it the cardstock will tend to be a little bit soft and so because it's a little bit soft your washi tape once it gets pressed through the um through the die cutting machine may actually want to try and um tear your cardstock so you got to be very careful when you go to undo that washi tape to make sure that it's not going to tear it all right, so I'm going to run that through and we'll cut the large flower. And as I said, because it's been run through the die cutting machine, we're going to be really, really careful when we remove that washi tape. And there you have a gorgeous flower cut out. Isn't it pretty? Absolutely super, super pretty. So now what we're going to do is we might cut out the other large flower on this one. So we'll do that again. We'll line that up where the little buds are and line it up nicely. And we'll, oops, we'll stick that washi tape down. Actually, I might be able to do the smaller one on this one because it's out of the way there. We might be able to get away with doing both of them at once. Okay, that and we might pop another little bit oh just there and I might pop a third bit on that because that one's pretty warped because I've only just heated it okay so we've got that and we'll run those through Oh, you're going to do one of the monthly stamps club today, Melinda. That sounds good. Are you doing the one with um, the December one with the nice background, with the um, with the blended background and the nice little water splats? All right. So we have our flowers cut out there. So I've only got to cut out that white one now. So we'll add the washi tape there and we'll add another little bit here. Okay. And then run that through. So washi tape is great for holding your dies in place to get them to cut out properly. Seeing as we don't have a magnetic plate and my magnetic plate has finally warped too much and came apart too much for me to use it, sadly. Hopefully Stampin' Up! will come up with another one. <laughs> we can hope. All right, so we have that done. I'm just going to leave those on there for any other time that I'm going to cut anything out that I might need to hold things in place. So the handle is a great place or even all around the edge of your machine to pop your little bits of washi tape because you can use them time and time again. All right, so let's pop that out of the way. Pop my die back in there. All right. So we have our gorgeous flower, gorgeous flowers cut here. So I'm actually going to take a piece of starry sky. We actually might make just one card out of this, you know. Piece of starry sky as my card base. We have a beautiful polished pink layer here. We have a basic white layer that I can actually cut down because I need to cut it down a little bit smaller to go on the front there. So we'll just take an eighth of an inch off. So I'm going to, um, so when you're cutting down layers as well, depending on how much of a border you want, if you just want a tiny little sneak peek of a border, you cut your layer an eighth of an inch smaller. If you want a bigger border, you cut it, 
one quarter of an inch smaller. So if you use that same philosophy in everything that you do, you will find that you'll have perfect layers no matter what. Okay. So, um, so, oh, the fitting florets one. Okay. Um, so as you can see there, I've got a, a gorgeous sneak peek layer. Perfect. Okay. So the philosophy is depending on how big of a, a border you want. So you can see there, the actual layer, the front layer itself is cut a quarter of an inch smaller. So you can see there that there's a bigger blue border than what there is pink. So I've stepped down the pink layer a quarter of an inch smaller. I've stepped down the white layer an eighth of an inch smaller. So depending on what type of what width of border is how much you actually step it down by and same thing the other way if you have a layer and you want to put something behind it step it up so so if I had that white layer and then I was like okay I want to put a pink layer behind it but I don't need, I don't want a big layer I would take the measurement of that layer and I would add an eighth of an inch so I would add an eighth of an inch to that length and I would add an eighth of an inch to that length and then you get a 16th inch border all the way around. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. All right. So um, I'm actually going to do a little bit of a, um, a fun thing here. I want to do a little bit of texture in behind these flowers for a start and I also want to cut out, I think I want to cut out some of these leaves in uh, mint macaron and I think I want to cut out some buds in polished pink and I also want to cut them out in I think starry sky so I'm going to with that layer of polished pink there I'm going to cut out a couple of them I've got that little stamp because I want to stamp that in the background to add a bit of texture. So I'm going to bring the cut and emboss back in again and I'm going to grab a piece of um, mint macaron. Do I have that here? Yes, I do. Okay, so a piece of mint macaron and I'm going to do a couple of leaves. I'm also going to do a couple of um, those flowers. So I pop the flower. Now that insert, I'm actually, I'm sorry, that layer, I'm actually going to, um, I'm going to be able to cut the flowers out of that and then hide it behind my white layer. No one's going to know. Okay. So if you're trying to conserve cardstock, that's a great way of doing it. Is if you're going to pop a layer in behind, you can actually cut. Um, die cut pieces out of that layer and still use that layer in behind as long as you don't cut into that outside edge piece that you have underneath um, underneath what am I trying to say underneath that top layer you will be fine okay so we've got one leaf there and we've got one leaf there so we'll pop those aside we might cut another couple of leaves out of that I'm not quite sure how many leaves I want to have. I might cut another one of those uh, little flowers as well. Let me just grab that off there. Okay. So let's go again with that die. Oops. With the little flower die. And we'll go again with those leaves. That and that. Whoa, get back on there. Okay, there, whoops, that one decided to move. Maybe I should have put washi tape on that one. Ah, it's because I've got a big bit of cardstock hanging out the other end. <laughs> okay, let's keep our fingers crossed that that's gonna work, there we go. Okay, that. Okay, and I may cut, so we've got four leaves there. I think that might be enough. I may cut um, I may cut some of those little flowers in the starry sky as well. 
you never know we'll just see what we're going to end up using lord knows but we'll try it so i've got a piece of that there and i might even do scary parts and blue leaves you never know could look good all right let's do that The bud dye is cute. I know, Melinda. It is, isn't it? So cute. Okay, so I'm going to pop those back into my case so I don't lose them. Okay. That. That. And that. Ah, uh, come off. Okay. All right, now, do we want to do a little bit of this texture in behind? Does anyone want to see what this texture one looks like? Oh, this one. We could do that on our white piece that we're going to pop in there. Now I've got to make sure I know which one I cut for the white piece. We'll measure both of those. One of these will be smaller than the other. I think it's this one. It is. It's this one here. So that one's for my insert. So let's run this through. Now, this is actually just going to give us a little bit of an embossed look. Well, I think it is. I'm hoping it is. If not, we're going to cut into our layer that we shouldn't be cutting into. But I think it's actually just going to give us an embossed look. Yep. Okay. Can you see that? Oh, there. Can you see? Okay. So we've got a little bit of an embossed feel happening. So I'm just going to add another one. Maybe just down there. We'll see what that looks like. Now, I could make that a little bit more obvious by sponging on that, and you could see it a little bit more obvious if you wanted to. I don't think I want to. I just want to have a little bit of texture happening there, okay? All right, so that layer is going to go on to that layer so as you can see you can't see where i cut the buds out no one would ever know but i do want to stamp with this cute little stamp because i love when it comes to textured stamps like this and i also love using just our smoky slate in behind to get a little bit of texture happening with that so i'm just going to ink that up and I've got to work out where I'm going to pop these flowers. So I think I'm going to pop one lot of flowers there. I think I'm going to pop. I feel like I want to, I feel like I want to cut these. <laughs> I feel like I want to trim these and pop them in around. So I might do this one here. And I'm going to pop them in behind. So you're not actually going to see where I've trimmed them because I'm actually going to pop them in behind. Oh, look at that. And then pop this one maybe in behind down there. And then we've got some of these that we can pop on here. Well, I sort of really want to maybe tuck that one in there and maybe tuck that one up in there so we've got quite a lot of flowers happening here and then of course we've got these gorgeous leaves and things that we can pop in as well so I just want to have a bit of a dry run so that that we just the um embossing that we just did I showed you what it looks like but we're not going to see it because <laughs> we just covered it up with all of these flowers but that's okay and then, of course, see, we can pop some leaves in here, which then just changes the whole look of it. Now, this is going to be a definite avid card. I'm telling you, it's for the avid crafter, this one. Okay. All right. We've probably got a lot too much on this card we might end up eliminating some because I can't even use the stamp that I wanted to use. I feel like I'm going to take maybe the big flowers away. 
maybe those big flowers away and maybe just do some with our little flowers because we could probably pop that little flower in there pop a gorgeous green leaf coming out there okay yeah i think that's going to be a little bit better a bit less we need it a little bit less i was throwing too much on that on that card i think Um, that one could be popped up. That one looks cute. And then we'll pop in those little ones around. All right. So I do want to actually use that stamp because I think it's really, really nice to use a nice little texture stamp like this. So where I've got the flowers here, I want to pop a little bit of texture happening just around there. Okay. So like that. And then, of course, I want to add some texture happening down here. So I'm going to do the same thing down here. Okay, so that's going to add. Can you see that? It's going to add a little bit of texture. I think I want a little bit more happening up through here. Okay, look at that. See how the texture just adds to that and just makes it, oh, it takes it to a whole new level. It really does. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this down because we need to glue that down. Now, one of the things I was talking to a team member, we had our in-person team meeting on Sunday and um, I was talking to Felicity, one of my team members, and she's new um, getting into paper crafting. And I was discussing with her that when it comes to creating a card, you build it from the ground up. Okay, so hey Kelly, how are you going? So you build it from the ground up. Okay, so you work out what your card base is going to be, you work out what your layer is going to be, you work out what your front layer is going to be, and then you build it from the ground up. So um, if you always stick to that motto, you will have no problem when it comes to designing your cards and creating your cards for the simple fact of um, having a plan. So anything that you do, you just, you physically have to have that plan. You have to know exactly what your plan is going to be, what your plan of attack is going to be. Now, I want to pop ribbon in underneath here because I want to definitely put my flowers on here, but I definitely want to have some ribbon underneath because, you know me, I love ribbon. You've got to have the bling, okay? So, um, so I'm going to pop a little bit of ribbon just there. So I like to wrap it around and this is the cheetah's way of doing the ribbon. So I'm using the in color ribbon. So this is the metallic woven ribbon and it's in the starry sky. So it's going with my card base. So that's one of the things about Stampin' Up! that is fantastic that everything matches. So we don't have to worry about trying to coordinate everything because it all matches, okay? So we've got our ribbon under there. So I'm building from the ground up. I'm building from the card base, the layer. Now I know that I want ribbon in there. I can't pop all my embellishments and everything on there and then go, oh, I need ribbon underneath that. So doing a dry run is really, really good and making sure that you can, you can check out where you want to have the ribbon. So I'm going to pop the flower there, but I'm going to end up popping a bow in here to cover up that that white piece there but you can see that texture behind those stamps have created a really nice background okay so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop that one up on dimensionals so that I can get a bit of dimension happening in the card now dimensionals are a great way of just taking your crafting to a whole new level now because I want to tuck things in I'm going to pop my dimensionals in a little bit from the edge of the flower so that when I go to tuck my things in, I'm not actually going to hit the dimensional underneath. So that's one of the things that you've got to understand is when it comes to planning your card and how you're going to put your card together is where am I going to tuck something in underneath and where what's going to what's going to hinder that, you know, like, is it going to stop me from being able to pop something in underneath it? There's always a workaround. You can always cut a piece off 
the bit that you're going to pop in underneath, but sometimes it's just better just to, to make sure you pop those dimensionals in a little bit further um, than what you normally would to be able to, um, to um, I think I'm going to go that way, okay? So I'm going to straddle that there like that. So I've got that now built up a little bit. And that allows me now to be able to pop some leaves in underneath. So can you see, I can actually pop things all the way in underneath without having the issue of it hitting something that it shouldn't be, shouldn't be hitting. All right. So I actually think I could probably get away with, I feel like I want to put some of this blue flower in behind. That's not bad because I actually want to use this one and this one as a bit of a pop-up on there. So I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to pop that bluish one down in underneath there or do I pop it in here? Ooh, there we go. Do I pop it in there and then I can pop my pink one up on there and I can pop my bluish one down in under here. What do you think? I might actually just pop it there. Yeah, I'm going to pop it there. All right, so I'm actually going to add a little bit. Hey, Crystal, how are you going? I'm just going to add a little bit of liquid glue onto the back of this one because it's actually going to glue down. And I'm just going to slide it in under there. As I said, because I've put those dimensionals in the way I have, I'm able to slide that down in underneath. Hello, Kay. How are you? I'm, I'm hoping you're well. I haven't spoken to you for so long. All right, so I'm going to do that. I'm actually going to pop that little one. I think I want to pop him just in underneath here. Or do I want to pop him up there? I could pop him up there and then pop the pink one over the top. I might do that. I might just pop that one in there. Oh, first day at school for the Littleys. Well, I bet that was a fun time for you. Yes, it's very busy, isn't it, getting the kids off to school? All right, so that one, I'm doing that, and then I'm actually going to pop this one up over the top here to add another extra 3D look. So I'm actually going to pop it just over there. So I'm, I'm going to pop two dimensionals on. Actually, I'm going to, I'm going to just pop one dimensional on there first. I'm going to pop some leaves in underneath, and then I'll maybe pop some dimensionals on. I sound like I don't want to know what I'm doing, but you know me. I craft on the fly. Okay, so I'm going to do that. I do want to pop some of these leaves in underneath. So I'm just going to add a little bit of glue on those leaves. And I'm going to pop one. That's why I didn't want to pop the dimensional one in there. Okay. One. Maybe up in there. We could maybe do some, no, I think I'm going to stick to the mint macaron ones to keep the colouring happening. That one can maybe go down in under here. Ah, that's looking so cute. Now, of course, we've got these little ones, which we could pop. Oh, we could pop that one in there. Okay, I think I'm going to pop that one in there. Some little buds coming up out of there. So I'm just going to add a little bit of liquid glue on that one. Pop him in there. Cute. Okay. We could maybe pop another little bud. In there. I'm going to pop another little one. I think I'm going to pop the pink 
up in here. And then I might pop the little blue one that we did. Just in here. How cute. We'll pop him in underneath that flower there and popping out through there. Okay, so you can see there we've got a fairly avid looking card. But how gorgeous is that? A beautiful bunch of flowers. All right. And then, of course, we're going to pop that onto there. So I'm going to do some dimensionals on the back. There. So who thinks that they might give watercolouring a go now that you've seen what you can do if you emboss? Do you think that's maybe made you not so scared to give it a go? What's your thoughts? Type it into the comments and let me know. Or do you enjoy watercolouring and it doesn't scare you? I can honestly tell you the majority of people I know, watercolouring scares them. <laughs> You're definitely going to have a go, Melinda. All right, so we're taking all those backings off. Got a lovely little mess here on my desk. So once again, if you've come in late, I did um, introduce that I'm having a I Love Stamping Opportunity Night here in my craft studio in Bow Desert. And if you are somebody that... Um, that lives locally uh, by all means make sure you register and come it will be a super super fun night to um, have a bit of fun creating with some people uh, now i'm going to show you i've got an insert here so now i'm going to show you what it's like to actually um watercolor mm, i'm gonna have to use stays on ink do i want to do that no, I'm not going to do that. I'm actually just going to stamp the flower. I'm going to, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to now do some blends on the inside so you can see what it's like to actually use our blends um, to create a similar look. So I'm giving you, I'm giving you so much for your money here today. <laughs> it's a free event. Fancy that. All right, so I'm just going to stamp that little flower. I'm doing it in basic grey. Now, although I've got our um our versamark ink on there it's totally okay to stamp that in basic gray um because the versamark you can actually emboss you can heat emboss any color you like with clear embossing so you can use the versamark ink you can go straight into say your pink ink um, and then stamp your image, pop some clear embossing, fold, uh, embossing powder over the top, and you have a beautiful, beautiful um, image that you can do. So now I'm going to show you. This is using um, the light polished pink. So this is the blends version of these flowers, and you tell me which one you like the best because I can tell you I know exactly the one I like the best, but this is using our blends and using our basic grey ink to get a, a coloured flower look. So if you weren't into watercolouring and you wanted to be able to still colour um, using our blends, then this is the workaround. Okay, let me see if I've got some... <sighs> I'm going to use Pool Party because that's the closest thing to mint macaron that I have. So I'm just going to use some Pool Party ink on the leaves. Okay, so now I'm going to go back in with the dark polished pink and I'm going to add some 
coloring like we did with the water coloring so we're just adding a little bit around the outside edges of those petals just to get a little bit more of a graduation with the colors Now, the thing is with our alcohol inks, they actually will, they will bleed through our paper. So if we were to do this on the front of just a card base, you can see here, they bleed through the paper. Okay. But that gives you a little bit of an idea of what you can get. But I mean, like you can look, the two, the watercoloring is so, so pretty. Absolutely so pretty. Yes, the blends tend to be bolder, Donna, exactly. So the blends are definitely a bolder look, but I can actually go back. So I've, I've coloured with the blends and you can see them, it's a lot bolder. But I can go back through now with my colour lifter and actually use my colour lifter on that flower and lift some of that colour so that I can get a, a more variegated look but to actually really lighten up the color a little bit so I can do that with my color lifter so I can make it not look so bold okay so so don't be scared to to get in with your color lifter and lift up some of that ink I can go on that leaf and take out some of that color and it just lifts the color and makes it not so bold looking but you can see there the color lifter will eventually you can see it's starting to lift that color out okay so um so there is definite uses for both types of coloring but if you want a more subtle look water coloring is definitely the way to go the solid the 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 water coloring tends to give you a lighter more subtle look but i mean absolutely stunning you can see there now of course with that cute little stamp i'm going to add a little bit of texture here so i'm going to go back through with my smoky slate and i'm going to stamp a couple of little bits of texture around there to create a bit of a textured look there. I might put, um, okay, so you can see there, just a little bit of fun happening there. Now, one of the things that is super, super awesome about this stamp set is the um, bold statements in this stamp set. So, we have um we have thanks and hello so um i'm actually going to show you now and i'm going to go and see if i can grab um oh, i don't have any black there i wanted some black cardstock hang on i grab a scrap of black And of course, there is no scrap of black. There's like a whole sheet of black. But anyway, we will use the whole sheet. <laughs> um, and I want to do some heat embossing, but I'm going to find I'm going to find my new container of gold, so you can see how good the gold is. Actually, no. You know what? I'm going to do white. Let's do white, so we can see how bold this stamp is. Uh, we'll use a bit of white. So let's glue that to the inside. like so so we've got our insert done okay and then of course we're going to use the embossing buddy on our black bit of cardstock we're going to grab that stamp thanks because i think that's actually what i want to do well, do i want to do thanks or i want and i might do hello no i'm going to do thanks <laughs> we always need thank you cards don't we all right so let's get the word Thanks, we'll grab a block. Okay, and I'm going to ink that up with my Versamark ink. Oh, I need to empty that gold out. Let's get some white again. 
so we'll do that. I think I might tip that gold embossing container out because I don't think it's working. It's not as gold as it should be. All right, so let's definitely put the bung back in. We don't want the we don't want the bung out. <laughs> oh dear. All right, let's do that. Okay, so we're going to stamp with our Versamark ink. So we're going to ink up that stamp. We've used our embossing buddy on our cardstock. Definitely, definitely important to use the embossing buddy on black cardstock because I am telling you, it will um, definitely be a game changer if you use it on your black. So we're just going to stamp that down the bottom and hopefully we've got that straight. No, I haven't got it straight. It's as crooked as anything, but that's okay. We'll cut it straight. <laughs> um, or should we try again? Let's try again. Ah, let's, let's stamp it up the other way and we'll try again. Let's stamp it here. Oh, much straighter. Much, much straighter. Okay, so now we will emboss with our white. We'll emboss that one too because you never know. I might use it on another project somewhere, someday. Now, it's really important that with your white, um, and I'm going to have a hole in that one there because it didn't quite stamp as good as it should, but we might end up using the crooked one and cutting it straight. Anyway, all right. So once again, come in with our heat tool. Can you see here how I've got a spot there? So it's actually not going to emboss as well as what it should. But you're going to see the wow factor when it turns white here. Whenever you're wanting to stamp anything white, heat embossing is the way to go. You get a nice, beautiful, vibrant, white embossed look. And it didn't help that that stamp is brand new and I haven't re-inked I haven't inked it before. So because it's brand new, it hasn't given me a good even inking, but that's okay. We'll go with the flow. Okay, now can you see, even with using the heat embossing, can you see the white flecks around? So if you don't use the embossing buddy, you will have way more of those white flecks around and you will not be happy with white embossing on black if you don't use your embossing buddy. So it's a real, it's a must. Um, so what I might do is I might cut maybe with my little trimmer I might be able to get it straight. We will see. <sighs> Let's cut it like that. Okay. Let's see if I can straighten this up a little bit. That's looking quite straight. So we could actually get away with this one. That's the crooked one I stamped. So we could actually get away with it. Okay. Now I don't have a guard on this, so don't do this at home. You don't want to take your fingers off. Oh, beautiful. So you know what? We've resurrected the crooked one, which is great. Let's take another little smidge off that side. How awesome is that? Okay, and then I'm going to go my usual trick like this and like this. Oh, 
doesn't that just set that off? Absolutely sets that off. A nice bold statement on a card. You could have done gold on white too if you wanted to, but I think that is going to definitely make my heart sing. What do you think? In there. And then, of course, we're going to do our bow because we need a bow. We can't not have the bow. I think the bow is going to absolutely that and some embellishments is going to just finish it off. Oh, how pretty is that looking? So I'm going to pop that on a glue dot and I'm just going to poke it in up underneath. Looking good, Gina. <laughs> and Crystal saying, so pretty. Okay, pop that on a glue dot and we will tuck that in underneath like so and then of course we have some of these beautiful milky dots and i think i'm gonna go these beautiful pastely pink ones i think will look really really super cute that that and of course, one down there. And I'm thinking, one down there. What do you think? How beautiful is this? Watercoloring isn't scary. You just have to give it a go, Gina. Exactly. Exactly. Um, Diane says, I haven't done emboss and watercolor for ages. Thanks for reminding me of how much fun it is. Well, that is awesome. I'm glad, Diane, that I've actually reminded you of a technique that you can do. Um, but you can see here, it's a beautiful set. Um, the designer series paper that is our celebration item that goes with this as well is really, really stunning. Like, honestly, the paper is gorgeous. The dies will cut out the paper. So the dies will cut out the flowers on the designer series paper, uh, which is really, really super awesome as well. So this set is really, really nice. And I think by memory, you can actually buy this set and you would earn the celebration paper that goes with it. Hang on and I grab, see if I can grab some of that paper. Do I have a packet open? I do have a packet open somewhere. This one. Okay, so this is the celebration paper that goes with it. So it's stunning paper. And as you can see, it's got gorgeous backgrounds on, on one side and it's got beautiful, bold images on the other side. Um, so, uh, you can see here, you could cut out these flowers. So a beautiful mauve color. So, um, beautiful, the Calypso coral and petal pink, absolutely stunning, stunning paper. Now there is actually, um, there is actually another piece of paper, but I've actually cut up a lot of it because I've cut up a lot of the flowers. Um, but it is really, really gorgeous paper. Now this is a free celebration item. So during, during celebration, you can actually earn free items. And this paper, which is called, um, so you can see there, I've cut out some of the flowers, but I fussy cut those because I didn't have the bundle. And then I was like, oh my God, I need the bundle because um, the dies will actually cut out those. So you actually won't have to fussy cut. Um, but it's called Fragrant Flowers, which is really, really a stunning um, bundle. 
and I can tell you it is something that I've, as I said, I did actually bypass this and skip past it and not think that I actually liked it. So um, so sometimes you can be surprised by things in the catalogue and you don't realise, but you can see there a gorgeous bit of water colouring, but then you can see the difference in the blends as well. So you could have watercolored that piece inside as well, so it could actually match the outside. But I just wanted to show you the difference between um, doing the water coloring and actually doing the blends coloring as well. Uh, so once again, if this is the first time that you have watched me, please feel free to hit that subscribe button. Any of the items uh, can be purchased through my online store, and you can find the link to my online store in the description of this video, and also in the show more box down below. Now, don't forget the I Love Stamping Night. I am telling you it's going to be a load of fun. So in person here in Bow Desert um, in the Scenic Rim. So if you live locally, I've got a 9.30 on Friday, sorry, Monday the 13th of February, and I've also got a 6.30 p.m. on Monday the 13th of February as well. So if you're working, you can maybe come after work. Come have a coffee, cup of coffee, have a bit of fun, make a couple of easy cards, get your hands on the stamps, ink and paper and just see what I do because I absolutely love sharing my love of crafting with others and I would love to invite you into my World Heart Crafters community as well. So, um, and don't forget, we do have an online version of it on Wednesday the 15th of February at 6.30 p.m. via a Zoom call. So it's a chance for you to get together, discuss with me anything you, any questions you may have about becoming um, a part of my World Heart Crafters community. And I can tell you all the benefits of um, the reason why you would want to purchase the starter kit, because it's by far the best deal in the book. We all know it's the best deal in the book. Every time we see a new starter kit special, we're like, why can't we join again? But we're already joined. So, um, so thank you very much. And being a part of my team, I actually help you inspire you with your crafting and help you get those products off your shelf and get them out into your craft room and crafting and creating with them. So can you imagine being a part of my crafting community? Because I do this for, um, for you here free on YouTube but my team get overload of me they get lots and lots of things they get my stamps club videos they get a global creative tutorial bundle that I do with 12 top demos around the world they get access to that every month they have team meetings we have weekly challenges it is so so good to be a part of the crafty community so if you're interested please let me know give me a call i'd be more than happy to <laughs> melinda saying we love you donna um i would be more than happy to discuss any details if you um are interested and um yeah have a great time and i will see you all again soon hope you enjoyed my crafting until next time, everybody, happy crafting.